Anyway, moving on, you were saying. But yeah, one, one thing I really do want to bring up, I was waiting for the design slash cinematography section for this. That stupid, stupid boat. Oh, <laughs> God. And Richter, I didn't even notice this until Richter pointed out. We were sitting there, and it went through a couple of scenes, and he looked at me, and he was like, did they clean the boat after the night? I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, look when it switches again. And I looked, and sure enough, at night, it's the decrepit boat with the, the webbing and stuff on it. And then in the daytime shots, it's freaking pristine and clean. You're like, the hell? Did Cat just clean pearl? the boat for no reason? Yeah, so it's the Black Pearl. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, good this point. I didn't notice that. <laughs> of Captain Jack Sparrow. So yeah, they apparently can't keep continuity between the days in this movie. It's just like continuity. Oh, no. Yeah, I that's how bad it's Continuity is for chumps. Yeah, I, w- I will mention, also say. Uh, yes, Mo. So I was going to say, fight-wise, I will say this this film, as much as this film's complete crap, but I'll get to that when I do the final thought, there is one scene I do like fight-wise, and that's where Jason David Frank, Tommy himself, mm-hmm. is so badass, he actually manages to just pose a few times and then say the word boo. The monster will shits himself, goes to run over the side of the boat, and Tommy's just like, yeah, get off my ship, and pushes him off. That's yeah. how badass Tommy is. That was pretty awesome, yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yep. There were there were some badass moments in the movie. I felt like the scene where um Kimberly and Jason they they were when they broke free of the uh the uh constraints when they turned evil and then it was like they looked in at the camera and they were like just broke them and I was like, Oh man, it's about to go. It's about to go down. Backstage yeah. juice for that. What Austin St. John wanted to do for that scene is instead of breaking the chains, he wanted to corkscrew flip over Jason David Frank and garrote him with the chains between his wristbands. Uh, and then while garroting him, flip him backward over his shoulder, throwing him into the, uh, in half into the pit. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that would have been awesome. But they said it was, like, not kitty enough. It was, you know, too violent. <laughs> actually, yeah, they, actually, uh, Austin St. John said it at the, in, uh, I think the first Morphicon on panel, the front red panel, he was asked about this, and he said that uh, when he when he uh, approached the, I guess, director with this concept, I think the director's exact quote was, if you do that, people will hate your character for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the opposite, I'm pretty sure. Yes. But yeah, I, I thought hate that it. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. I would have wanted to see that. Mm-hmm. See, and then Molt wanted him to take it another step further and have when Tommy is like reaches to save Jason, just miss. <laughs> Let Jason <laughs> fall into the lava. Oh. Yeah, I would like that. Yeah. But I will <laughs> say with my these... a badass. Yes, but yes, Molt, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, I will say with the evil versions, evil Kimberly hot, evil Jason... I was I was disappointed with that. I'm sorry, I was disappointed with that. We've seen Jason and Tommy go at it before, and it's these great martial arts fights this time round because of how he because of how Jason was uh, was being portrayed and stuff because of the spell. I understand it. He just seemed way too wooden for me. It, it just lacked all the intensity of their previous fights. Yeah, and I, I was it, like, yeah, that kind of sucks. I think it had to do with the director and writer too, because like as we just as I just pointed out. Austin Saint, Austin Saint John has some really good ideas, and he obviously knew kind of where the character of Jason would go at this point and what he could do. And the director was like, "Now nah, we need to tone it down. Mm-hmm. We can't make the, the 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 fans hate you." Yeah, because fighting the guy who gave him the best fight in the series would really make fans hate Jason. Well, you know, See, I'm, not, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not about the fact that he should like go around in the eleven and throw him into lava. But that, that, that no, I'm not about that. I'm not about they could have just made it a bit more move-for-move martial arts like they used to really make you believe that, wait a minute, this is Jason and Tommy actually going at it again. Instead of, yeah, this is Jason possessed, a little wooden, clearly Tommy's going to beat him, and clearly the day's going to be saved. Right. I think one one of the reasons they might not have done it is because when uh, Jason fights Tommy, Tommy is morphed, so that was probably a suit actor and not actually JDF in the suit. Um, uh, he had the helmet off. Did he have it off yeah. when he fought him? Okay, I didn't know if he had it off. Yes. I didn't remember. Because when they turned evil, he took the helmet off to try to get through the camera. Oh, yeah, and she listened, true. and Kimberly like, kicked him aside, and that's when Jason grabbed Tommy from behind. 
Okay, well then they probably yeah. didn't want JDF to like rip the suit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, yes, I can agree. A, a full-on fight would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I think that about does it for design and cinematography. Um, let's move on quickly to sound design and music design. What do you guys the think? Theme. I thought I liked the theme. Yeah, the uh, theme. Yeah, the turbo theme. It was like the scene where it showed mm-hmm. them um, driving down the desert road in the in the uh, the so swords. That yeah. was that was like one of oh, the highlight yeah. moments dan, for me. Dan, 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 and the dan. fact that it has the uh, original uh, Go Go Power Rangers guitar riff in it is yeah. uh, adds to the badassness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I could take a legion of badassitude. Assemble. I- <laughs> I, I, I also enjoy the alternate, uh, the, the other shift in Turbo Song that's playing in the end credits. Oh, Shifting yeah. into Turbo Gear. Yeah, all, all, I was saying, all I was saying was I could take or leave the music in this one. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. I liked yeah. the sound effects for the uh, Megazord sequence. Because, you know, d- despite what you may think of the look of it, with those sounds, it actually kind of like how the sounds of the movements and stuff in the first movie sold that the suits were metal. To me, the sound effects of this one when they were merging sold that they were like big honking vehicles merging together. Yeah, it was, it was very much like, um, like there, Transformers. It reminded me of um, yeah, like Transformers and uh, Gundam for some yeah. reason because whenever they would like attach a new gadget or a new weapon, you could hear the sound of like the exhaust mm-hmm. seeping out of it as they as it. Uh, the metal cling together. It was sort of like that. I liked how it felt like an actual construction of yeah. mm-hmm. of uh, yeah. something. Yeah, guys. Hmm. The song that they got playing late in the movie, whilst they still got the actors on screen, was Turbo Time. Ah. That's the name of it. Okay. They've, there's, at, there's three different songs on the soundtrack, at least, that were all played in the movie that got Turbo in them. Shift into Turbo, Power Rangers Turbo, Go!, and then Turbo Time. Turbo ah. Time is the one that they're playing in the final scenes, basically. Right. At the tournament. Yeah, so cool. this, since it sounds like, for the most part, the sounds, we all think the sounds are pretty good. The music, give or take, you know, depending who you ask. Some of us liked it, some of us didn't. Um, I think we can pretty much skip over the sound now. We go straight to writing. And I'm sure some people have some uh, issues with the writing of this movie. It was oh. terrible. <laughs> yeah, the writing could have been done better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This but, is actually I mean, written it... by someone that made up on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is completely lazy. Makes you think. I don't. I. I mean, I. I don't know. I, I'm guessing it was. It all came down to what they could do and what they couldn't, because I feel like it would have been <laughs> so much better if they didn't have the the weight of this is going to be for kids. So you gotta make it kid friendly. That weight would probably had a very big, uh, like, uh, pressure to the added a lot of pressure to the writers for like, because I, I mean you can always make it uh, make a movie that's like still that can still appeal to adults, but it's like it, I don't know maybe maybe the people who wrote it weren't at that level yet they weren't at the uh, you know Disney Pixar level. Right, look, the, the pressure they had with this movie that they didn't have with the first one is that this one was supposed to be in continuity with the series, and I think they yeah. failed on that front because if you put it in continuity with the series, half the shit in this movie doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I do want to say I, in the ass. when oh, because I was like five or six when this came out, and when Diva Tox goes Hell's Bells, I was like. Can they say that? Like that's, that's a bad word. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, like the one piece of writing bells. that I like. Yeah. Imagine what would happen if that version of yourself had heard this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> since, they put, since they put that in the movie now, now that you mentioned that because I didn't even notice you said that, but now that that's in the movies, I want I, I would have wanted now JDF to when when Tommy first sees Justin step out, I wouldn't I would want him to go oh hell no. Yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah. no, bitch! Well, wait, did did somebody make a comment about the writers having a problem with this or something? New. No. I well, I said that they probably had a problem with 
making it uh, with the pressure of making it kid friendly. And then I said they also probably had the pressure of, of making it in continuity with the with the series. Yeah. I said I was surprised. I like to know. I just made up on the fly. Mm. <laughs> I I just like to note that one of the writers was Shuki Levy. <laughs> Boy, you don't fucked up. <laughs> uh, the other writer is a Shell Danielson, whoever that is. No idea. Yeah. But anyway, Mr. Phoenix, I believe is this well. is your time to shine. Because we have right, go. we have reached the backstage section, so take it away, Mister Encyclopedia. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to go through this quickly. Um, Give us the juice. Here comes the juice. Yippee I can't give you the juice. The glove don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, the biggest thing about this film is effectively when this was intentionally this time. This wasn't all screw up because this was made by the TV people who knew what they were doing. But when they filmed this thing, it was like three hours long. And in order to make it fit in a, in a legitimate running time for a kid's film at the time, and still now, they had to cut it in about a half. So about an hour and a half's worth of footage got cut out of the film. Uh, things included, some of the major things included in that footage were um, scenes where the Rangers morphed uh, into, the, into the Zeo Rangers and uh, got their asses kicked by Demotox's Piranatrons, demonstrating that the Zeo powers were not powerful enough, hence explaining why the turbo powers were needed. Um, in, in, in place of that not being included, we got the scene of a cat attempting to morph into Zero Ranger 1 Pink when she falls off the waterfall. By the way, before, yeah. before you continue, uh, something I just realized I wanted to mention for the design. Did anyone notice that they changed the design of the Piranatrons for the movie? Yes. yes. That they had their people in suits, uh, and there was actually a female Piranatron with boobs? What the hell, man? Really? Yeah, so <laughs> the, the two Piranatrons on the ship, when you look on the ship, there's always two Piranatrons on the ship with... Um, Diva talks and her crew and stuff. One is a right. dude, one is a chick. And the one that's a chick, you can see that they obviously sculpted the suit to make it obvious that she was a female, because you could see her rack. Really? <laughs> yes. It's like, why am I looking I've at got a, I've got to boobs? <laughs> because you can. Exactly. Yeah, well, they, 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 had, they, had, they had to make that fit, so, you know, it was what it was. But, um, yeah, when they, obviously, when they moved on to the show, they probably figured, you know, you know, we, we, we if the Rangers are going to be beating these guys up, we don't want it to look like they're real people because we don't want to see, you know, that well, happening. The show, they so, had to match the Sentai footage. So they used the Sentai suits, I would assume. Which, uh, is, which kind of boggles my mind. Then why then did they not use those suits for the movie if the movie is supposed to be in continuity with the series? It All of a sudden, that doesn't make sense. It's like, they yeah. They had a bigger budget to use the... Yeah, and so they made piranha, so they made one of the Piranatrons a woman in skimpy armor with a fish head. But, and boobs. but here's my question: Are we sure the Piranatrons are in continuity? Because if I guess, yeah, I guess they are. Because I'm just like, because if Piranatrons are in continuity, how how is it a bunch of fish people end up working for a team of race car drivers? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, go back to the. I just wanted to mention that because that always Maybe. just, just it, it bugged the hell out of me that. You only ever see two Piranatrons, and they're obviously people in suits, and one is obviously yeah. a female. Maybe they evolve by the time the full summer comes down, because the first episode of Turbo is, oh yeah, guess what I did this summer? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. There you go. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. Um, other important things that were cut out. Um, there was that whole sequence with the, uh, the Zeo powers, which showed that. There was a lot of additional backstory regarding Divatox, I believe. And uh, one of the uh, other more important aspects that was cut out was there was supposed to be a side character called Mandica the Mermaid. Uh, she was supposed to appear with the Ghost Galleon and aid the Rangers in their journey to the uh, Nemesis Triangle and in getting back, but the character was completely written out. Wasn't she supposed to be a love interest for Adam, too? I yes, read I that did. somewhere. Yes, there was, there was something to do with Adam there as well, but that never panned out. Um, yeah. Also, cut was initially um, Adam wanted to sort of reprise his role from the first movie, in uh-huh. that in this movie his character got a minivan for a Zord. He was going to make a comment about that, similar to the Frog Zord, but they wouldn't let him do that. It's like Adam was uh-huh. drunk. I got a minivan. Exactly. Yes, a minivan, <laughs> like the one you kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just love doing that reference, don't we? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so that was also uh, that was also uh, that never happened because they wouldn't let him do that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
but just the, the hour and a half or so of footage that was cut out has never really been seen. But those are some of the things that we know were included in there. Um, those, those are mostly the, uh, the the main things that were in, involved in there to um, to make that make sense. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I know. Uh, one of the fact is that the, the suit, they, the costume they used for the villain Malagor at the end, um, later on the following season when they were filming in space, which they thought was going to be the final season, and they needed an appearance for Dark Spectre, the Lord of All Evil. They reused the Malagor costume with some minor alterations. Yep. And let's call uh, Malagor what he really is. He's a ball rock of Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to make that joke. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I'm, I'm working with a bunch of clowns here. Hey, th- those are the movies you made. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> oh screw you, boy. Screw you. Yeah, sorry, James. Go yeah. ahead. Yes, um, two things. Number one, if those of you at home don't get that reference, our good friend uh, Mr. Aon over there uh, bears a striking resemblance to one Peter Jackson. Yes, yes, he does. Fucking hell. And, uh, and also... <laughs> That reference shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, one of the other things that really needs to be spoken about here is the fact that um, the plans for the Zio movie, initial, uh, the Zio movie, the Turbo movie, were uh, changed drastically when uh, about five episodes before the end of Zio, uh, David Yost walked out on the production. Um, yep. It was revealed um, just recently, about a year or so ago, um, when David Yost finally opened up to the fandom after many, many years of shunning it and not wanting anything to do with Power Rangers, he uh, came out of the closet to the fandom and revealed that he, he was gay and that the reason he walked off set was because not the cast, who were very good to him, but the crew were constantly making... Uh... <laughs> the hell was that? Exactly. They were constantly making errant noises? Yep. Apparently. <laughs> Somebody have a cell phone on vibrate sitting next to a computer. Perhaps. But anyway, continue. Yeah, that was well, they were made a, a, a few too many um, derogatory remarks uh, regarding his sexuality. Um, but mainly the producers, who apparently, from what y'all said in an interview, constantly called him and constantly called other uh, members of the cast in to talk about his sexuality and did, was he gay and da 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 da. And uh, an exact quote from Yost that's been mentioned ever since this big interview with No Pink Spandex. Google that. They're a great website for interviews. Uh, he said that he was, quote, called faggot one too many times, end quote. And so he walked out of the production. Uh, the initial uh, plot was going to be that Billy developed the turbo powers. Um, during the Zeo season, he disappeared uh, no, frequently, and it was hinted at that he might be the Gold Ranger secretly until that was revealed to be Trey of Triforia. And the plan was to reveal that when he disappeared, he was actually working on the turbo powers and turbo swords during that time. And he was going to play a large role in the movie. Unfortunately, um, they had to uh, change all that when David Yost walked out of the production. I will say with him walking out, I can totally understand why he does. And constantly making comments about someone's sexuality is just completely wrong. Hi, Simon. (laughs) (laughs) We joke about him because he's a good friend. We joke yeah. about him because he doesn't matter as a human being. Oh, <laughs> wow. And not because he's gay, just because he's him. And again, the x Pound does not condone or otherwise encourage the comments of one Chris, <laughs> a.k.a. the mole. I was told to say it by one Marcus Shadow. No, no, you weren't. <laughs> Don't make Marcus me wish Shadow. you well on your future endeavors. Oh. Marcus Shadow, I'd like to see you in my office. <laughs> You don't have Why, are you coming out now with Jim as well? <laughs> <laughs> he I walked want into that one. Got to let it show. Anyway. Um, yes, also, I'm wondering, now I, I don't have any confirmation on this, but given the way the turbo plot led, I'm wondering, given that we knew Super didn't want to be written out, I'm wondering if they were intending on using it to write Billy back in as the Blue Ranger, and when he walked out, that's when they brought in the Justin idea. I don't, don't know if they mind that little that. Quick. 
theory. I don't have confirmation. That's speculation on my part. But it would seem logical that if Billy had remained in the film and developed the powers, that he would have become the Blue Ranger again, which Steve Credit is wanting to be written out. But when Yost walked out before even that, they had to they decided to bring in the Kid Ranger, which was an idea they had tossed around previously. And so they decided to bring in Justin to be a Ranger. I, I will say I doubt that because from what you said, when he was the go when he was up for the role of Gold Ranger and stuff, the people didn't want him being a Ranger again. So my guess is they were just going to use him as the basically the assistant to Zordon, the, the guy who basically has yeah. like what two or three assistants. How lazy is he? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I'm not sure. All I know is that it was stuck in a tube. What? How much can he really do? Mm. He can nod. Well. <laughs> He can shoot lightning out of his forehead to recharge the green finger. Uh, yes, he can. Let's do the time warp again. No, let's it's, not. It's we are not that. doing Rocky Horror Picture Show. Not for a long time. You said yeah. time warp. And we were talking That's about the time warp. The transvestite. What else was I meant to do? <laughs> yeah. And anyway... Um, yeah, effectively, I'm not sure if there was any. I, I, again, I, all I know is that it's been stated in uh, by the producers that uh, Yost was to have a large role in the film had he stuck around. So there's some drastic rewrites involved with his departure as well. Um, I think that's about all I have for backstage stuff. There wasn't a whole lot going on uh, in terms of this film because not a lot is known about what was in that missing footage. So there's not a lot of detail about exactly what the. Uh, oh, actually, there's one other thing. One more one thing. One more thing. <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The other, the other was the uh, at the time of the filming of the movie, uh, both Jason Frank and Akia Paris had expressed interest in leaving the show, and uh, one of the reasons that Austin St. John and Amy Jo Johnson were brought back for the movie was that the initial plan was that if uh, they, they were to write out um, Tommy and Tanya, then Cat would be. Yellow, Cat would have become the Yellow Turbo Ranger, and Jason and Kim would have returned as Red and Pink Rangers, respectively. Uh, unfortunately, when they were asked about it, Austin and Amy did not uh, want to commit to that shooting schedule again, as they had initially, and they turned down the opportunity. Uh, combined with that was also, as hinted at earlier, the um, initial intent that the, to, of a romantic relationship between Jason and Kimberly. Uh, initially, I know in some of the cut footage, there were initial scenes that hinted at that. Uh, in the movie, it would have made them made it more obvious that they were a couple, but much of that was cut in the missing footage. I would also be reminiscent if I didn't say to you, James. I was just thinking, assuming Billy did create all these turbo powers, with the fact it was not revealed in the show, and I have heard this before, I'm not sure, could Billy have been the one who was meant to be the Phantom Ranger? It's possible. That leads to a question of how would that have worked? Because there was a scene near the end of space where he was injured, and we see wires and mechanical shit coming out of the injury in his leg. So that's, sort because, of to... that's because space was filmed afterwards, and didn't they say during Turbo they wanted to unmask him but didn't? And then in space, where they just reused right. the thing and said, "Okay, fuck it, let's injure him." He's a robot. Yeah, I've heard that before. That's true. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Maybe they were going to do that. I'm not sure. That would have been kind of cool if they did that. I know there was rumors that they were going to reveal him to be Zordon's son at one point, but that never panned out either. Who, Billy? Yeah. No, this Phantom Ranger. Phantom. Hornswoggle? Gotta love all the wrestling references we throw in. He is the Phantom Ranger. He's not the anonymous Ranger. (laughs) And I have to put up with this bunch of... Every day as well. Mm. Sorry, sorry. No, no more wrestling points from us. In fact, you could even say we're just going to rise above the hate. Mm. <laughs> well, rise and above we have to this. put with you continue to steal our money with your damn upcoming Hobbit movies. <laughs> oh, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing as that, how that's it. When for you be made King Kong, age. you raped my childhood. <laughs> <sighs> Are you guys done? How dare you put Jack Black in that movie? <laughs> hey, he's not my chat. He's not my fault. He's your fault. <laughs> anyway, since that yes, that, wraps that, it up the... for backstage and extras, let's move on yes. to our final thoughts. This time, I will not start it off. Um, so, final thoughts and ratings. Let's go in reverse and let's go to Nero Rossi. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, 
it's it's Power Rangers, and given what we were given, I think it was it sufficed. But there were definitely points that could have been improved. Um, as for my rating, I'm gonna give it a six point five. Fair enough. Aeon. And the third. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have as big a problem as other people do with Justin, mm-hmm. but overall, it could have been done a lot better. So about six point seven five. Fair enough. Uh, let's go with QJ. Okay, uh, I had varying. Uh, opinions about this movie mainly because the how I uh, <coughs> originally viewed it when I first saw it was very different from how I view it now um, I pretty much I, if, if it were me when I first saw this movie I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10 but um, being in a uh, much older and actually into film and uh, critiquing films I probably give it a six probably yeah probably a six um i thought it was all right but yeah they're like like uh you know said i i probably would yeah they, there was a lot that they could have improved on but really i'm pretty sure the writing would have been better if, if they, were, they had hadn't worried so much about how you know parents and kids were going to take to it and just write act- an actually good story instead of just doing it for commercial pur- commercial purposes. Fair enough. My partner in crime, Richter Hammer. Okay. Well, for me, <coughs> um, one problem I had with this was one of the problems I had in the first one as well, where I felt like there were some wasted scenes, like all the Larigo stuff, just like they cut out important stuff to have him interact with monkeys and crap, and that just bothered me. <laughs> um, Sounds a lot yeah, like the Turbo series. They they got rid of Wolf's <laughs> Skull for a pair of yeah. monkeys. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, the, the story wasn't that great, and, you know, they didn't try to make a cohesive movie, which, even if it's for kids, I mean, the parents have to sit with the kids to watch this, try to put some effort into that, too. <laughs> and... Granted, I was a lot older than I think everyone but Marcus when when I, there were commercials for this. I uh, didn't see this in the theaters or, you know, I only saw this, whatever, three weeks ago. And just seeing the commercials when they would show Justin, he's like, I'm a Power Ranger. And I was like, that's a dumb idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. But um, yeah, other than that, it, I, there, some of the fights were cool. But yeah, I don't know. Just too incoherent a lot of parts yeah Yeah, it definitely could have been done better it's the editing on or you know whatever they cut out obviously they cut out the wrong stuff so i'd probably give it a five yeah i I, I was just wanted to say um this to (laughs) capitalize off of what he said i felt like it also definitely was not a a movie with longevity definitely because it's not like one of those movies where you can watch as a kid and then just think it's awesome and then think it's equally as awesome when you get and when you yeah. get up in age it's definitely a movie where you, you gotta be a kid to even uh get Appreciate like it. yeah really just get past all of the the plot holes and just yeah but at least it right. didn't date itself like the first movie <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> yeah i mean t- just, just as a really quick thing take fred with the reverse baseball cap yeah that's not 90s at all <laughs> huh. Dude. Yeah, pretty much. But I was gonna say, so yeah, on. lots of people walking around with Justin's hairstyle. Oh, <laughs> yeah, one of them is named Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> but that was in 1998. I rest my point. <laughs> true, that's true. True, true. I was gonna say, Saban, if you're paying attention, Richter Hammer, Power Rangers fan, as a child, who likes Power Rangers? So yeah, please, if you make a samurai movie, make one that he can enjoy, because he's going to have to suffer through it. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to see it like six times, try to make it coherent so I'm not just screaming at my TV. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. No. <laughs> anyway. That's uh, not a shark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if anything, it's more uh, friggin' dinosaur. Nyak, nyak, nyak. Yeah. Anyway, Chris <laughs> the Mole. Okay, this may sound harsh or whatever, but I like Timber. I like I like Cat in her two major outfit. <laughs> Evil Kim was kind of hot. The full <laughs> scene on the ship with Tommy, where he scares the living shit out of a monster, was cool. The rest of it was complete shit. The worst film I've ever seen. I'm going to give it a 0.5 out of 10. And I've seen Dragon Ball Evolution. That's how shit this film is. Oh, oh, that's my oh, Damn. No zero point table? <laughs> yeah, zero point five. No, it doesn't even deserve a table at zero point five. Ouch. You're not worth a table. That's a that's a box quote for you. <laughs> this movie's not worth a table. <laughs> oh, James bitch. Phoenix. Take it away. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Sadly, I also saw this movie in theaters when it came out. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I recall seeing this and, and acknowledge, realizing at the time that it was not as good as the first one. I knew it at the time. In retrospect, it, obviously, I liked it better then than I do now. I mean, it, like I said, it has not aged well. It really hasn't. Um, the fact that it's canon with the show is... I guess that's, you know, I don't know. The TV people made it, so it looked more like the TV show, so whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, overall, it's the biggest problem was, number one, they had to do a lot of rewrites because Yoss walked out, and they cut half the movie out. To this date, I still hope that one day we get a uh, some kind of director's cut of the film with that hour and a half of footage in it, and we can see the full movie because I think it'll be ten times better. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that. I don't know about ten times, like but it'll be better, yeah. Well, it'll be way better, so we'll, we'll have to see where that... Uh, well, where, 10 where times that... 5, is it not? <laughs> true yeah. that, true that. The fact that when GPR said that it it looked like the TV show, I feel like it probably would have been better as like a TV movie if you were going to take the, that exact yeah, same script. Yeah, I, I could, could see that, yes. Mm-hmm. If you were able to do it with a budget, le- I mean, that... I mean, because the budget was $8 million, so that's, that's pretty hefty for a TV show, but if they were able to pull that off, they, uh, they, I feel like it would have been a lot better. I would have enjoyed it a little bit better. Yeah, I, I yeah, will say yeah. this about the, the Morphin movie. At least that one felt like a big screen Hollywood movie as yeah. well, the Turbo yeah. movie. But having yeah. said that, again, <laughs> the Morphin movie dates itself by some of the costume <laughs> choices. Um, yeah. And at least as a segue into my opinion of the movie. Um, I didn't think it was as bad as Mole thought it was. Uh, it's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination. It's pretty crap. Um, but again, at least you know the Megazord stuff I felt was far and away superior to the first movie because at least you know the sequence looked awesome. The Zords looked cool. I, I love cars, and at least the Megazord looked like a cohesive robot. It didn't look like a bunch of shit thrown together and held together by rods. No, it looked like a bunch of shit thrown together, sewn together, and thrown on some skinny guy. <laughs> With a giant helmet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, but there was just so many plot holes in the story. There was Justin. I mean, I, I didn't hate the character as much as a lot of other people hated in the TV series. But after having seen this movie, oh my god. He's just a complete <laughs> mess of plot convenience and those are usually the worst characters that are there for plot Mm -hmm. you know um, basically the only reason i would ever watch this movie is a if if you have to review it like i did (laughs) and b if you really 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 want to know what happened between uh zeo and turbo and how they got the turbo powers then you can watch this because it at least kind of explains it. It's supposed to explain it. doesn't really, but you got to Well, explains how they got the Turo powers. It doesn't explain why they stopped using the Zeo powers or, no. for that matter, where the hell Tri- Triforia went. No, but that's the only yeah. two reasons I see it. Of course, the, the distant third is because it was the only Power Ranger thing I haven't seen, so I was like, yeah, I might as well watch it. <laughs> I mean, I heard how yeah, much I'm gonna, it was. See, I'm going to say you don't even need to watch Power Rangers Turbo, uh, the film, 
if you want to see the TV show, because the first few episodes, they flash back to all the important shit. You get the cliff notes without having to suffer through that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. true but, but I will say this, having seen the movie after mm-hmm. having seen the TV series, it did explain some things and it expanded on it. So in that respect, it helped me understand the Turbo series a little bit better. And I think it's worth it just for that if you can suffer through it. But, um, yeah, I, I will give this movie a solid 5 out of 10. It, it was pretty terrible. Okay. Um, so mm-hmm. I would like to thank everybody for joining me on this grand oh. review of two movies. And, uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry, QJ, that you couldn't make the first review. Um, Mark, just, yeah. I, just out of curiosity, do I get to give it a numerical score? Because you kind of cut me off and never went back to me. I thought you did. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I'll try to get center one, and then you cut me off, and yeah. Sorry, give your score. Uh, I, I'd probably agree with some of the others. I'd probably give it about a six. I mean, given that it's a Power Rangers movie, you know, if, if you're a kid watching the show, it's not that bad. In retrospect, as an adult, yeah, you're probably not going to want to sit through it unless you're a big fan like we are. Some of us are, but yeah. Also, one final fun fact I want to throw out. Um, yes. There was a cut scene in that missing footage where uh, in the jungle, uh, Cat mostly cat, but also Tommy used a flamethrower on an animal that was attacking them. I don't remember what the animal was. But they, they attacked with a flamethrower and that scene was cut. However, if you own or can find a VHS copy or some of the early DVD copies, a screenshot of Cat with the flamethrower is on the back. With the promotional <laughs> pictures. Yeah, I remember that. They, they, they designed yeah, the I box before they cut talk. the scene out. So. <laughs> Yeah, but they, was... they, they, they designed the box art before they cut the footage out, so the scene with the flamethrower is on all the VHS box copies. And some of the early DVDs, it's not on the DVD box I have. I think it's on some of the earlier ones. I had always wondered why that, that scene was never in there, yeah. <laughs> That's why it was, in the, it was part of the cut footage. They probably thought the flamethrower was too violent for kids. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All the awesome. For problems. kids, everybody! For yeah, kids! Nice. Turbo you know, the flamethrower. <laughs> and yet Fox didn't have such a problem when it came to things like Beast Wars with the mm. mechs ripping each other apart anyway it's why don't you wrap us up there Mr. Shadow <laughs> yes so yeah thank, thank you everybody for joining us uh, thank you QJ well, for showing up for uh, part 2 here for the uh, Turbo no review um, mm-hmm. for everybody present I'm not gonna go through everybody because we have way too many people <laughs> um i am mark shadow and i would like to encourage you to keep checking out all of our things here at the x pound um we have rise from the airways with uh mr james phoenix over there and we're currently working on some star trek stuff and i believe you're working on doing a review of a tv show is that right james um, yes, I'm currently editing the. I'm currently editing my initial uh, Star Trek review. Um, that'll be of my favorite episode entitled "Disaster." I'll, I'll be posting that. Um, and then I also, uh, in addition to other stuff planned, I, I hope to review the first season of the CBS show "Person of Interest" before the new season premieres in a month or so. I may not get to it. I'm going to shoot for it, and I'll see what I get to. Cool, cool. And then we have. Uh, the gaming zone and the comic zone with Chris the Mole, and I believe Chris, you're or what well, we're going to be doing a uh, Transformers Fall of Cybertron review in about a week. Probably, yeah, probably about a week. And thank you for having me on this on your show. I just say the pleasure was all yours. <laughs> do you <laughs> have anything? Do you have anything down the pipe for the comic zone that you want to plug? Mm, not really at this point. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, we also, as always, we have uh, Aeon, who is the Aeon writer and the Aeon Ranger. He's hopefully working on some uh, Ranger Sentai common writer. When I get my drives back up and running. Yep. So be be on the lookout for that for those for those Toku fans and Ranger fans. And uh, yeah, and then of course QJ, if when he's not like busy doing all this music and stuff, we'll probably do, do a music review here and there. And of course we have. The sad gamer, who as always is sad and reviewing sad games. <laughs> Yay. And, yeah, what, yeah, but that, on, a, on a related note, sad gamer, are we going to get any kind of a, a video recap of PAX? Yeah, it'll probably be a podcast, but yeah, I, I'm hoping to do something like that. Cool, cool. 
On a, another related note, in October, may we dress up QJ as a vampire and call him Blackula? <laughs> <laughs> and Hexen, no, okay, no, you may Blade. not. There you go. And Hexen, I I'd rather be Blade, not Wesley Snipes. <laughs> There yeah, since so I went through everybody, I might as well... I went through everyone anyway. Might as well mention uh, Nero Rossi. He'll be joining us from time to time on stuff, I assume. Since now you're officially you. the X-Pound family. Yes, thank you for having me. It's been an honor. You're welcome. And if you, if you ever want to uh, develop a show, just uh, speak to Mr. Phoenix over yes. there. Yes. And oh, yes, I, I am here. And on behalf of our uh, good friend, the Fallen Angel, who could not join us this evening, uh, he did want to be here, but unfortunately a combination of work and scheduling didn't work out. Uh, like I said, he's the yeah. born owner of RangerVision.com, so he's one of the big fans with us. Come on and visit us over there. Uh, the Fallen Angel, I'm Gold Phoenix Ranger. He did that himself. Common Rider Decay, <laughs> Nero Rossi. Tachi. <laughs> Akiwa Hajime. Common Rector, all, Chris A.K. Like, the Mole, we're all there. And QJ is online on there with a Y. Online with a Y, yes. Got some great contests. You can come vote in the uh, Ultimate Ranger Tournament and vote for your favorite Ranger. Yeah, uh, Tommy. Tommy's do that. Works very hard on that. Has yes. to Tommy or the polls are um, <laughs> For Tommy and Cam, go green! Yeah, can Tommy not win that? What is that? <laughs> and anyway, yeah, I am it. Marcus Shadow, your host, and uh, time for me to pimp out some of the, the stuff pipeline? coming up on my show. What's that? I asked, did you have anything in the pipeline? I do. I have quite a few things on the pipeline. Um, if you've been, if anybody has been following my tweets, um, I do have um, my Batman Dark Knight Rises review. And the Amazing Spider-Man review, both of which have been recorded, and they just need to be edited and produced. And so those will be coming out probably in the weeks following this one. Um, and then I'm also – I also currently have in the pipes the fourth and final uh, podcast of Power Rangers Month. So yeah, that's going to go over by a week or two, but oh well. Um, and that is the future of the series hosted by the sad gamer Richter Hammer. So be on the lookout for that. That will be, along with all the rest of my Showtime stuff, it will be on the X-Pound channel. Uh, after that, I don't really have anything really pressing out the matter. Uh, my schedule of stuff is on the X-Pound board, xpound.proboards.com, so you can see Review what the I'm Michael considering. Bay films. What's that? <laughs> Review the Michael Bay films. I might. No, I will burn his DVDs before he gets to those. I might review the first one because I own the first one. I after I saw the second one, no, I, I could not bring myself to spend money on that garbage. Honestly, the, the third one is the third one is better than the second. Um, other other than bringing in Leonard Nimoy just to bastardize his other roles, it, yeah. it's better than the second one. Oh, my yeah, the fans, yeah, to be fair, the first, except for Bumblebee. Second, so I said, to be fair, the second and third one are still better than Turbo. <laughs> this is true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's right. I'm Marcus Shadow. Hey, Good night, everyone. Hey, reboot is better than Turbo. <laughs> <laughs>